Hey, so today is December 26th. It's a Tuesday and I have a lot to catch up on. I've been reading all Christmas week, but I haven't been recording anything. So this is like future Gabby hopping on to like go over older stuff. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the books that I finished. Um, unfortunately, I did not get to all of my Christmas books before Christmas. But it's okay because I still finish them. So the first one I want to talk about is called The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. I gave this a 4.5 carat. Um, it was really good even though it was a novella. It only had 104 pages but it was zooming. Like once it got there, it got there. So you're basically following two girls, Ashley and Emma, and they both go to a university in London. Emma invites Ashley home to her parents' estate for Christmas, and then everything goes sideways. Um, even though I guessed where it was going, I still wasn't ready for the twists that were there. So that should let you know. Um, definitely recommend especially if you want something short to fill up the uh to fill up any gaps in your reading goal seeing as there's only six days left in the year i literally can't even wrap my head around that six days there's only six days left in the year and then it's gonna be 2024 i can't i can't it's absolutely wild to me the next thing that I want to talk about is the other book that I finished and that was The Christmas Candy Killings by Christina Romero. I gave that three carats. Um, it was 304 pages. It was 104 pages at least too long. I knew who did it by like chapter 12. I She could have wrapped that up a lot faster. That was very, very annoying to me. But in that, you follow two twin sisters, Alex and Hannah, and they have a mystery bookstore candy shop. And people start dying, and their candies are left behind, and all the candies have actually been poisoned. And they have to figure out who did it, because now the sheriff is looking at Alex. Although it was really odd to me that the sheriff was looking at Alex and not Hannah, even though Hannah is the chocolatier, like... You know what I mean? Like, it's one thing for you to have a whole bunch of, like, suspects or for you to be, like, one-track-minded when it comes to solving a murder. But, like, if you're looking at her because she's the proprietor of the, proprietor of the cut candy shop, but not her sister, who looks just like her and actually makes the candies, are you even doing your job? You know? So, that's done. What else did I read? Oh, I finished... The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I gave that 4.5 carats. Um, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the twist. I wasn't ready for the reveal. I wasn't ready for the like six twists that came after that. I wasn't ready. Although another novel way too long. I could see. I could see it. It, it was necessary. Uh, I listened to it on audio. I had the physical and the ebook, so I highlighted a whole bunch of shit in the ebook. Uh, if you want to see my notes and my highlights there on my Goodreads, I'll put that down there. Uh, but yeah, just a good time had by all. In that one, you're following a character called Aiden, and it's essentially like Quantum Leap meet a murder mystery. He starts a new day and a different host, and each host is beneficial to finding out who killed Evelyn Hardcastle? It wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad. Uh, I gave it five. I gave it four, four point five. I think four point five carats. I really liked it. Um, Sarah, the other girl in my book club, really enjoyed it. We're just waiting on Bree to finish it, and then we get, we'll get together and talk about it probably either this Saturday or next Saturday. Um, we're also going to do our books giving that day, so that's fun. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else book-wise that I need to tell you from back then. I think that's it. So now we can get to current events. Today, I got an email from Barnes & Noble, and they are having a 33% off sale for their hardcover. So you get 33% off hardcovers or 50% off hardcovers, depending on what they are. And if you're a member, 
you get $20 uh, credit for every $50 you spend in hardcovers. And I had some deals. So Boy Wonder and I went and got some hardcover novels. Um, he got some cookbooks. I got some novels. And we're going to do a little book haul. And then I'll tell you about I'm re what I'm re I'll tell you about what I'm reading now that I've started something new. All right, so we went to Barnes & Noble and this is what I got. I got Audition by Ryu Murakami. And the back says that in this glorious over-the-top tale, Aoyama, a widower who has lived alone with his son since his wife died seven years ago, decides that it is time to remarry. Since Aoyama is a bit rusty when it comes to dating, a filmmaker friend proposes that he stage auditions for a movie he never intends to produce in order to cast the perfect woman as his bride. Only one of the applicants catches Aoyama's eye, Yamasaki Asami, a striking young ballerina with a mysterious past. Blinded by his infatuation, Aoyama discovers too late that she is a far cry from the innocent young woman he imagined her to be. The novel's fast-paced thriller conclusion doesn't spare the reader as Yamasaki takes off her angelic mask and reveals what lies beneath. So excited. And then I got another uh, Ryu Murakami, and it's called In the Miso Soup. And, like, this is the back. Like, isn't that so pretty? Oh, I love it so much. Okay, so in the back it says, It is just before New Year's. Frank, an overweight American tourist, has hired Kenji to take him on a guided tour of Tokyo's sleazy nightlife. But Frank's behavior is so strange that Kenji begins to entertain a horrible suspicion that his new client is, in fact, the serial killer currently terrorizing the city. It is not until... I I it is not until later, however, that Kenji learns exactly how much he has to fear and how irrevocably his encounter, encounter with this great white whale of an American will change his life. I love how tiny it is. Like, they're not the same size. I just love how kitschy this is, like, designed. It's so cute. I got That's Not My Name by Megan Lally. And this sounds right up my alley. The back says, it was a mistake to trust him. Shivering and bruised, the teen wakes up on the side of a dirt road with no memory of how she got there or who she is. The police don't know where she came from until a frantic man arrives at the station. He's been searching for her for hours. He has her school ID, her birth certificate, and even family photos. He is her father. Her name is Mary, or so he or so he says. When Lola slammed the car door and stormed off into the night, Drew thought they just needed some time to cool off, except Lola disappeared. Now his friends, the sheriff, and the whole town are convinced Drew murdered his girlfriend. Forget proving his innocence, he needs to find her. The longer Lola is missing, the fewer leads there are to follow, and the more danger they both are in. <coughs> For the hardcovers, I got these two. I got Burn the Negative by Josh Winning, and The Bell and the Fog by Lev A.C. Rosen, which is the sequel to, which is the sequel to a book that I wanted to read this year, but I don't know where it is. Um, it's called The Lavender House. I actually started The Lavender House last year, but never came back to it. So I'm thinking of doing a day where I just read them both. So I got this guy, and then I got this guy. And this one is about a movie that is a cult classic because like everybody who even sort of participated in it died and now somebody's trying to remake it which is like you know right up my alley so I had to get them so those are the books that I picked up and then currently right now because I wanted to try and like get into something before the end of the year I am currently reading Better Run by Alina May it's a dark romance thriller and essentially it's about a woman who is a food influencer and she gets kidnapped and she has to figure out why. I'm about 60, 70 pages in. It's interesting. I am intrigued. This is not uh, a morally gray character. These guys are morally black. I don't think there's a saving grace between the two of them. So heads up if you read this. Go to her website and check out the trigger warnings because they are heavy. Yeah. What else have we done? Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Merry Christmas. Um, you should be seeing this soon, but 
happy new year i'll see you later with some kind of update so i basically didn't film anything last week i have like little clips but nothing like meaty so this is like our meaty section and then we'll go through the rest of the week and then on the first you'll get this so yeah bye hey welcome back so this is a small clip of what i've been reading um it is after midnight so it's thursday the 28th and i just completed better run by alina may it is labeled a dark romance thriller to me it wasn't um this book has heavy trigger warnings there was like absolutely no consent she is essentially kidnapped and stalked home into love which is absolutely gross to me um there were absolutely no saving graces with these men they are considered morally black so like every time i was looking for something to like kind of redeem it does not exist don't waste your time looking for it it does not exist i gave it two carrots um the spice would have been fine if there was like any kind of consent but since there was none it was it just gave me the skeeves all the way through it's about 217 pages um, essentially, you follow a character named Jo. She is a food, like, Instagrammer influencer. She makes videos about food and recipes and things of that nature. One night, she is kidnapped by a man named Jaden, and then she is taken to a cabin where she meets another man named Cole, and they keep her hostage as part of a revenge scheme. And that's all I can tell you, because otherwise it'll be spoiled. But two carrots uh if non-consensual is your thing sure but it's not mine um while i was at work today i had a regular come in and uh she was asking me what i was reading and i was like oh i'm always reading a mystery or a thriller or well i'm not gonna tell you know a regular customer of mine that i read erotica but you know those two items and she's like oh i've got some thrillers and mysteries in my car do you want them Hell yeah, I do. Even if there's something I don't read, I can give them to the library. Like, what are you going to do with them? Probably throw them away? Yeah, bring them on in. She brings them to the bar, right? So she brought me three books. I got Full Black by Brad Thor. It's in a little bit of a rough condition. But it's a little paperback. And the back says, born in the shadows and kept from heads of state. Some missions are so deadly, so sensitive that they simply don't exist. When one such mission goes horribly wrong, only former, former Navy SEAL Team 6 member, that is a fucking mouthful, turned covert counterterrorism operative, Scott Harvath, can carry out an audacious plan to prevent one of the biggest terrorist threats the United States has ever faced, complete and total collapse. But as the identities of the perpetu uh, perpetrators are laid stunningly bare, Harvath will be left with only one means to save America. Unable to trust anyone, he will be forced to go full black. Let's just think about that for a minute this is not my scene i don't do spy thrillers i don't do government thrillers and i don't actually like the united states so this will be going to the library let's see what else we got the next one we got is called the dead season by cristobal kent and it's a mystery in florence i think this might be like an art mystery um the only other art mystery i've read was an exquisite corpse by helen a harrison and I literally gave that one carrot, so hopefully this is a little bit better. The back page is kind of torn, so I don't know what the first paragraph says, but it says something about investigators, suspects that identify the body may help him solve his newest case. A very young, very scared, and very pregnant woman desperately wants him to find her missing fiance. At the same time, alert bank teller Roxana, wondering over the unexplained absence of a regular customer, finds herself unwittingly evolved in something far darker than she ever imagined. As the city bakes in the Tuscan sun, Sandro's skills are put to the test. He and homicide become intertwined and inescapable. Is this, is this art? romantic suspense because it's labeled mystery but like that sounds like a romantic suspense plot um but yeah this is what it looks like and it is thick 
I don't even know how many pages are in it, but a lot. Oh my god, 411 pages. I might give that one a try. And if I didn't like it, then I can always take it to the library. And then the last book she gave me is called Heart of Barkness by Spencer Quinn. And it is an audiobook. Like, I literally only ever get audiobooks from the library. I've never bought them, purchased them, owned them, anything. So this is odd. This is weird. Um, but this is a Chet and Bernie mystery by Spencer Quinn. And it says that Chet the dog, the most lovable narrator in all of crime fiction. That's high praise. And P.I. Bernie encounter heartache and much worse in the world of country music. <laughs> They're both music lovers, so when Lottie Pilgrim, a country singer from long ago, turns up at a local bar, they drive out to catch her act. Bernie's surprised to see someone who was once so big providing, performing in such a dive and drops a C-note the little detective agency can't afford to part with into the tip jar. The C-note is stolen right from underneath their noses, even from under Chet's, the nose that misses nothing, and before the night's over, it's stolen again. Soon they're working the most puzzling case of their career, a case that takes them back in time to search of old border town secrets and into present day danger where powerful people want those secrets to stay hidden. Chet and Bernie find themselves sucked into a real life murder ballad where there is no one to trust but each other interesting and this apparently comes with one disc and it says that it's about eight hours and 8.75 hours uh so now that i know what these books are about i don't think that i'm gonna read any of them but i would rather have them maybe read them give them to the library than you know just have her like toss them so yeah that's our little haul we talked about our new book. I think that might be it for right now. Um, I'm currently getting ready for the last video of the year. Um, I finalized my list, I think. And I'm probably going to film that pretty soon. You should see that by the end of the week, I think. I can't believe 2024 is here. I can't believe it's about to be a new year so freaking quickly. Like, so quickly. This year is over. It's over and i'm trying to figure out what to read next because i still have three days it's the 28th it's the 28th so 28th 29th 30th 31st first so i still have four days left oh my god i could probably fit like three or four books in that time i'm trying to figure out what i want to read decisions 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 oh let me show you what i did with the bookshelf so because it's a brand new year, I moved all the books that I'd read to the shelves with unread books. And because I recognize them from just watching them throughout the year, um, I know that I'm not going to like mix them up or separate them. But the red bookshelf right now is holding a TBR type shelf idea. Um, essentially, there are books scattered that I've been wanting to read for a while. They've been on TBRs that I haven't gotten to, yada, yada, yada. Um, the final video of the year is a 24 for 24. So these shelves include those books plus books that I know I want to get to in the year of 2024. So I'm just going to give you like a little sneak peek. Oh, it's like, there you go. Okay. There you go. Yeah, so... This is the shelf with, that has the most of the 2424s on them. And then that's another shelf of books that I want to read. And then as you can see, this shelf is empty, but not for long. So yeah. Be prepared, because these are probably the next sets of books that I'm going to be reading. Bye! Just real quick, hopping back on um, because I figured out what I'm going to read. I got an ARC from NetGalley and it's called That Night in the Library by Eva Jerzyk. Looks like this. And it's a literary mystery about a group of students studying for their last exam. And they go into the library and do like a ritual for good luck. And then the lights go out, the doors get locked and bodies start dropping. So I'm so excited to get into this.
Hey, so today is Thursday the 28th and I finished another book and it's a graphic novel. It's called Batter Royale by Lyle, E-L-E-I-S-L, -L. Lyle Adams. So freaking cute. I gave this four carats. I absolutely loved it. It's about two kids, Rosemary and Fred, who are about to hit college. They work together at Fred's mother's restaurant, and Rosemary wants to be a patissier. She's always experimenting in the kitchen. She decides to add a dessert to his mother's menu. Um, after a food critic comes in, the food critic loves the dessert and she gets invited to this crazy cooking show called Battle Royale and the money that they would get as the reward is enough for her to go to college and then it's all about her adventure on that show so freaking cute the diversity top notch the romance adorable just a fun time had by all. I finished it at work while I was waiting for one of my tables to cash out. And then I didn't do any other reading because I went and photographed Ladesia and I gotta show you some of these pictures. Because they're great. And yeah, so that's done. Um, I decided that I'm going to take a little bit of break from novels because I've literally been reading all year. And I'm just going to read what I want to read. I have downloaded a bunch of graphic novels that have been interesting me and like have been on my list for a while. And I'm just going to go through them and see what we wind up finishing by the end of the year. But I don't want to make it a big thing. I just want to see where we get to. Right now, though, we're at 146. So maybe we do get to 150. Who knows? See you next time. Bye.